Hey friends, how are you? Welcome to Car Therapy. So, uh, how to change other people. I mean, that's usually the starting point. It's, it's a part of why we start relationship masters. I have an issue with, you know, in my relationships. I wish he or she would do this or say this or stop doing or stop saying it. We, we want to control. This is part of us that wants to control things that are beyond our control. And it makes sense. We're not bad for it. It's normal. Because those are things that really bother us deeply. Um, we can't, obviously we can't control it. Uh, we can't control it directly. The only thing we control is we can work with our thinking, uh, the words we say or stop saying, um, doing actions we take or don't take. But there's this deep drive to change people. But the truth is um, we can impact people. We actually have a lot more power to impact people than we realize, but it's not in the way that you think. <clears throat> so for example, that need for validation to be heard. I need you to agree with me or hear me so that I can feel okay to feel what I feel. I want you to understand me. And there's this deep, intense drive that's going on. Um, and part of it's, it's, it's unhealthy and, and, the, and the focus isn't right. Um, it's because uh, you know, I, need to, I need to first validate myself. Uh, my approach to wanting, you know, I, I, you can feel the difference. Um, I, I want you all to feel that, but it's that when I feel valid, I've been tuning into me, my feelings. That's how I validate myself as I listen to my feelings. What are you looking for in someone else? If I share something with you, you hear it, right? We've done videos before just the, that when somebody's talking, you don't have to do anything but listen. It's so deeply validating. I hear you. So you're saying this and this. Ah, okay, right? Try it with somebody. See how it impacts them. They speak. You just listen and reflect back to them. Well, why can't you do the same thing to yourself? Reflect it back to yourself. Well, that's what happens when I sit and I tune into what I feel. So that's how we validate ourselves. When I do that, I then enter conversations with people. Let's say I want to share something, you know, with my partner or a friend. Um, if I'm not valid, I come into that conversation so deeply needing you to hear me. There's an intensity. There's a drive. There's a pleading. There's like a desperation for you to hear me. It adds and colors it and really intensifies. It's like gas on the, throwing gas on the fire. Or I already know that I'm allowed to feel. And I know what I feel. I'm in touch with what I feel. And now I'm just aware that I'm, you know, I'm absolutely solid. I don't need you to hear me in order to feel okay to feel it. But it's bothering me. What you're doing is bothering me. I then approach the conversation. I share it with you. Hey, when you do this, it makes me feel like this. There's a lot more calm. It's a lot more clarity. Um, and when we speak in that different way, it's much more impactful. Um, so that's the first step of impacting other people is that we, we go from intense driving, pleading. I'm really giving you power. I'm saying you have all this power. Here, take power over me You know, to make me feel good, make me feel okay. You have the keys to my validation. That could be felt. There are implied messages. The tone I use, the way in which I speak, the way in which I emotionally react. There's an implied message there of, I'm talking about my feelings, but there's an implied message of, hey, you have full control over me. It's in your hands. Whether the person realizes it or not, they're going to react to it. And this is why the cycles continue. They'll continue to push buttons because maybe that gives them a sense of power and control and they feel good. Um, so I've now given you power. So I'm trying to control you, but I'm, I'm doing the opposite. I'm giving you control over me. The other thing is, is after, after we start to tune into self and really validate ourselves, we feel more calm, more secure, more solid ground. We come into conversations much more calm. When you go from that intense, quickly, zero to 60, really fast, you know, the tone of the voice raises and I'm, I'm trying to be heard and, you know, and it escalates. Instead, I, I can get to a place of real calm, firm, um, clear, assertive. Uh, with less and less and less anger, <clears throat> I have an impact on the other person. When I get to that point, that calm, that I'm not so reactive to you, I'm not taking everything you say so intensely personal, I start to see more and more, this is your issue. I've already learned from the trigger. Another thing that we can then start to look at is, wait a minute, when you do the things, you say the things and do the things I don't like, how am I reacting? And what we'll start to discover because now you can have more clarity because you're a bit more distant because you're feeling more valid and secure in yourself. You start to realize, I'm kind of rewarding it. I'm enabling your responses. I'm doing certain things that um, reward and enable the behavior that you're doing to continue. What would happen if I stopped? How would that change things? What if you didn't get the payoff you were doing? You know, <clears throat> if uh, with, you know, for the parenting with a kid, if every time a kid acts out, I scream, I yell, I punish, I get involved with the kid. That kid just got a huge amount of negative attention. While the other kid in the corner who's over there painting and drawing, I'm ignoring them because they're behaving so well. What if it was the opposite? If the good kid, I went out of my way, you're sitting so nicely, 
uh, making a beautiful picture. And the kid who was misbehaving, I said, it's not okay. And I ignored them. I didn't give them attention. Well, eventually, that which we don't feed will fade out. It's, it's negative reinforcement. Uh, it's a uh, yeah, negative reinforcement. I'm, I'm reducing that particular behavior. And so if you'll take a look at as you're validating yourself so you feel more calm and you're more able to assess the situation, see it more as your partner or friend's issue, take a look at one of the things that they often say, the way that they say it that triggers you or behavior that do, they do that really bothers you. And then ask yourself, wait a minute, right? You're getting good at this because you're already tuning in. Hey, in, in those interactions, how do I feel? Then ask yourself, well, what's, how am I reacting? When they say and do those things, what's my reaction typically? And then you know, and then start to take a look at it because those are the things I want to reduce. How am I enabling or rewarding it? On the flip side, how do I react, words and actions, when, when my friends or partners behave in ways that I like? Do I get closer? Do I engage more? Do I give more? Do I connect more? Am I in some way rewarding it? So how am I rewarding things? So know that, you know, see it as that which I reward and feed will grow more, will continue more, just like that which I practice grows stronger. It goes the same for the people that are around us. When they're acting in ways that really work for us, how am I rewarding that? Am I rewarding it? Should I be rewarding it more? How can I reward it more? <clears throat> the other one is those things that I really dislike. How do I often react? How else could I react? How differently could I react? And in that way, not reward it so much and actually help to, um, to, to reduce it. I'm not going to give you that payoff anymore. It's your own triggering. You go deal with it. Um, projecting onto me, starting a fight with me is not going to be a way to, quote unquote, deal with your feelings. I'm going to destabilize it. It's like leaning on a table, right? And I pull the table away. You have to find a new balance point. Try it out. Let me know what you think in the comments.